This is the Dengaramo show for Pop Dust. And today we have a very special episode for you. We are in Los Angeles and we're gonna go barge in on musician Cade. So let's see what he's up to. I don't think he knows we're right here. <laughs> Hello, Woo. come on in. I was just getting ready to make some garlic chicken. You're on episode one and only of Cooking with Cade on Pop Dust. Today, I'm gonna to be making creamy garlic chicken, and it starts right now. What's the first step to like making your signature dish? Um, so step one is you season the chicken, make sure everything's ready to go, and we are gonna start by cooking the chicken, and then we're gonna add some chicken stock, some garlic, some heavy cream, and just make a garlic cream sauce. I thought most people from LA were vegan. <laughs> a lot are, but I came from Florida, and in Florida, we like southern food. A lot of that is fried chicken, and I thought I'd make some grilled chicken today. You guys eat alligators? Um, I have eaten an alligator before. I, I don't I don't eat alligators, but I have before. Gator bites. <laughs> okay. While we're at it, I mean, as he just stands here, I have to say, there's no one other to just like slay effortlessly, like Cade style. Wow. I have never seen Cade not slaying. What are you wearing today? So this sweater from LA After Dark, very cool up and coming streetwear brand. Shout uh, out. Yeah, shout out Natalie and Carter. Um, and then I'm wearing some camo pants. Uh, I forget where these are from. I think I got them vintage. Uh, and some AF1, the chrome heart necklace. That's about it, this is, this is today's look. To wash these chicken hands. We may have brought this up on the podcast because you've had Cade on It's Real with Jordan and Demi, but I mean, I can't help but notice the tattoos on his hands. So, what are these tattoos? Yes. So, the tattoos on my hands say Without Fear, and I got these about two years ago, and it was when I decided with music that I wanted to make sure that I was never thinking too much about what if something went wrong or worrying about the possibility of failing um, because I think with music or whatever you're pursuing it's really important for your mindset to be focused on the goal and the plan A and not really having a plan B so that's why I got these and I think they're probably my favorite tattoos that I have. That's actually fire advice, not having a plan B. Yeah I feel like it's important because if you have a plan B and you know that you have a backup option this is a lot easier to fall back into it, where if you feel like the only thing you're gonna do is have a plan A, then you're gonna get make that plan A happen, you know? Or at least that's how I see it. Time to flip the chicken. It's starting to look pretty good. Here's our uh, cooked ones over here. Wow, who would have thought a world-class chef and <laughs> a world-class artist in, in two, in one? Mainly that chicken artist. was dope. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, it, it came together. It was actually really good. No, it actually was really good. That was so bad. What other hidden talents do you have? You know what? I don't know. I feel like my main strengths are with music. Um, I don't know. I can draw a little bit. Nothing crazy. Um, I would say that cooking is like my, my secret gem. That's true, but a lot of people may not know that you are also like a freaking amazing guitar player. Oh, Let's yes. Let's talk about that. Okay, um, so I started playing guitar when I was eight years old. I'm 26 now, so it's been quite a long time. And I just always would look up to like rock stars. Like I would like watch Jimi Hendrix and like videos of Jimi Hendrix and be like, I want to be like that and do that. And then I got into John Mayer and really loved his music and that got me inspired. And yeah, I feel like I just spent a lot of time focusing on my craft when I came to guitar and it started to become natural for me and, and it's always been an important part of my songwriting process. Is that how you, did you write your first song on guitar? Uh, I did actually. Yeah. I wrote a song when I was 13 years old called Dizzier, Dizzier. that I still like remember to this day. What, how does it go? Um, it was like, it's like I'm on a carnival ride that never stops. Cause I promise you that I've never been dizzier. Hey. <laughs> you gotta release 
that one? Yeah, it, it's an oldie That's but a good. Yeah. Why would you put that one out? Because the, you should hear the verses. They're pretty amateur. Oh man. Okay, so then you. When was the moment? Because I know you have a really incredible story, where you and your brother ended up going from East Coast to West Coast. So what right. was the big decision to make that move and how has that been going for you? So I started playing in bands in high school mm -hmm. and I knew that I wanted to do music full time like for my life, my career. Uh, so I started by doing touring and I would like travel around during school hours. I would be leaving school all the time to go play shows in other places. And at a certain point, my principal asked to meet with myself and my parents and uh, he was just like, listen, if you're gonna miss this much school, that's fine, but we need to find a different path for you because this isn't gonna work out wow. at this school. Um, so that's when I decided to switch to online school oh my God. and started doing the touring thing full time. And I met um, my friend Trevor, who's in the group Cheat Codes, and him and I really hit it off as friends and collaborators. And he invited me to move out to LA uh, around 2015. And then I moved out here in 2016. And then my brother and I have done music together our whole lives. So Yeah, shout out uh, DA. Yeah, shout out DA. Danny Quest, amazing Danny artist. Quest. Um, so yeah, the, the two of us decided to move out here and we ended up getting a place together and we haven't looked back since. It's been amazing. What is it like, you know, kind of, making that move and choosing a very different lifestyle than maybe you know your classmates and the people that you grew up with yeah um i think the the word would be scary or intimidating at first it was a very intense um decision it was something that i knew that i wanted and it excited me i kind of always try to push myself to be a little bit uncomfortable because i feel like you Accomplish the most that way and uh, and I just kind of took the leap of faith and I'm really happy that I did because it's it's the reason why I'm doing everything that I'm doing now. Can we talk about, um, I don't know if we're getting this on the camera, but this track right here, um, this remix track of Maggie Lindemann. The Pretty Girl remix. Yes, I think that's about to hit a billion streams or something like that. It is, it is, which is what crazy. I'm gonna get, feel gonna, like? hopefully I'll get one of those uh, plaques with the plate, you know? Dude. Have you seen the videos of no. people getting, so when you get a billion streams on Spotify, you uh -huh. get a plaque and it has a Spotify disc on it, but it looks like a plate uh -huh. and Diplo and all these artists have eaten meals off of the plate. So oh, I'm trying to decide man. when I get that. Hopefully it happens soon. Uh, I need to decide what I'm going to eat off of it. Maybe some garlic, garlic chicken. chicken. <laughs> Maybe some garlic chicken. But what does that feel like? Like a, a billion streams? Um, I mean, I guess simply put, incredible. Uh, yeah. it, it was just a crazy situation because... I remember finishing the remix and being really excited about it, but there was no thought in my mind that that was gonna be a moment that opened up doors or was different from any other song that I released. So to see the numbers that it did was really incredible. And shout out Maggie and Cheat Codes, they're both incredible. Wow, I mean, okay, so other than, I guess, Cheat Codes, who have been some really good mentors or people that, you know, I know it's a crazy career path and, right. you know, you're like touring, and the artist life can be a little crazy. For sure. You know, there could be four logos splashing. <laughs> there could. We don't I, know. I think that having my brother out here with me mm -hmm. is an incredible thing. And, uh, and honestly, just having my family like a phone call away always. Mm -hmm. um, my sister lives out here as well. Mm -hmm. um, has always been a great support system for me because it kind of keeps keeps my uh, head in the right place. Mm -hmm. And then as far as other music people, you know, there's a lot of producers and writers that I'm friends with, uh, great artists, you know, I've, I've met people along the way like Mod Sun and Gashi who have like taught me a lot and I kind of look up to them as far as what they're doing and how long they've been in the game. So um, I don't know, I, I feel like there's quite a few people that have definitely inspired or helped me along the way. Um, but definitely having family here has been important. That's super cool. I also wanted to get into the new album. Um, I remember hearing it like a year ago before it came out. Yeah, you were um, one of the first ones to hear it, I think. Yeah, from top to bottom. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, whoa, this is like, this is going to really open up Cade's fans to a, to like the real him. Right. Um, and a lot of these songs are super close to your story 
and you've really like showed us like your thought process and my like my personal favorite is problems really yeah with the dollar sign check that let's go um and let's talk about that track is that if you can like in your own words dissect those lyrics yeah of course um so problems was a song that i wrote when i was feeling angry about relationship stuff uh simply put i was just frustrated and um i guess it was based off of the feeling of feeling like when when there's someone you love and you think that they could be doing something different as far as how they make you feel mm -hmm. um being frustrated and and that's kind of what the inspiration was for that song and i, I try to take it to a, a different place and uh and make it interesting but problems was a cool one because I remember receiving um, like the start of the beat from Camden, who's this great producer that I work with. Um, and right when I heard it, and just everything started flowing so naturally. It was one of those where when I got into the studio, like it started just like coming out. Like it, mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of pen to the paper. It was more so just like singing into the microphone and, and it happened really naturally. Um, but Problems was like the angsty record on that album. It was definitely like the, the pissed the off, uh, fuck you kind of record, yeah. Damn, and you actually have a feature on this record. Um, yeah, on, on Problems or, or on, the, on the album? On the album. Yes, so uh, a there's a song called 20 Missed Calls. That's 20 Missed Calls, okay, yes. I was singing 20 Missed Calls. Yes, yeah, so 20 Missed Calls uh, has my friend Nate Traveler on it. Yeah. Nate is an incredible artist um, and songwriter as well and him and I did a session together with this other great producer named Trev Case mm -hmm. and the three of us were working and in the flow was just like it, it was the most incredible energy I don't know how to explain it it was like when the three of us were in the room like sparks were flying and uh and basically the song started off like that with Nate on the second verse singing his part on the second verse and uh he was going to let me recut that verse. And I was like, Nate, you sound so good on it. Like, mm -hmm. you should just stay on this record. It sounds incredible. Um, and he stayed on it, and I'm glad he did. Uh, he lives in Florida, too. He's another one of the Florida boys. That's fire. Yeah. There is, like, a really cool artist community in, like, where you're from. A absolutely. There, there's a, it's interesting because um, when I lived in Tampa, I didn't feel like there was... Uh, too much going on on the music side but then stepping away from florida being in la i meet so many people that i realize are from florida and they're just in different pockets of florida that i wasn't familiar with um but now when i look back at tampa there's such an amazing local scene and some really really talented and uh unique artists coming out of that city. So. Is Tentacion from Florida? Um, XXX? Yeah. Yes, he is from Florida. There you go. Yeah. Look at R that. R.I.P. Damn. Um, yeah, that, a, a lot of really amazing talents came out of Florida. What's your personal favorite off the album? And what's one that you were like, mm, like if, if you had to take one off yeah. and maybe like switch it with another one? Okay, one so my personal favorite from the album is this song called Hard to Let You Go slash voicemail. Um, yeah, that's the last track. It's yes, it's the last song and uh and it's really cool because one, I feel like it's really emotional and it cuts through super hard, like the energy was captured in the song. Mm -hmm. Um but there's this part like four minutes in where it has this like beat switch up transition mm -hmm. and every time it hits I just like I get super visual with it. Like I imagine myself like turning into like color or like in a like a ray of light. Um, so it's just like a, a really cool special song to me, um, and I love the feeling of it. And then if I were to take a song off of the project, that's that's kind of hard because I like I spent like two years making sure that I picked like the ones that I really like felt like I cared about. I guess if I had to. Make one of them go. Hard to let you go. I don't no, know. No, no, not hard to let you go. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to let <laughs> them go. I, I don't. I don't think I could. Okay, we we have your cooking lesson, but if you can give us maybe some inspiration for your fans out there that are just kind of maybe still struggling from post pandemic. Yeah, of course. Um. Yeah, she she does that. I think, for my mental health journey. The most important thing that I had to learn is to like tape a, or take a step back and realize that 
all the pressure that you're putting on yourself like doesn't need to be there and i know that for people that struggle with mental health it's so much easier said than done but like just learning to adapt to like i don't know taking breaks for yourself like if you need a day off taking the day off or making sure that if you need to clear your schedule to clear your schedule like i think it's important because sometimes we get in this like hamster wheel of life where we kind of just do everything we think we're supposed to and for me the most important thing was like making sure I carved out time for myself and that I was happy doing everything I wanted to do, you know? Right. So so I'd say that's the most important. And eating right really has an effect on your mental health too. I learned that too. Like I, I try super hard to make sure that I'm eating the right kind of foods mm -hmm. because if I don't, I'd notice that my head starts to go crazy. Like garlic chicken. Like garlic chicken. Sometimes he's gonna <laughs> eat Cade's famous garlic chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. This was an awesome episode. Thank you. And for I think we're going to have some more garlic chicken. Let's go. Time yeah, to eat. Time to eat Thank again. Thank you. Thanks so much.